Hi everyone. I am going to do some examples for you of derivatives of rational functions. And I have six different levels of questions to kind of walk you through. So in level one, we have a rational function here, a ratio of two things, top and bottom. And you'll notice sometimes I'm going to use what's called the quotient rule for derivatives. Uh, and other times I'm going to simplify first. You kind of have to get a feel for how this works. Um, but whenever you can simplify something, uh, it's easiest and best to simplify things first and find the derivative in the easiest way you can um, and kind of use the quotient rule for derivatives as a last resort. On this first example, we should be able to simplify this because we see just this single term of x to the fourth down in the denominator. So what we'll do is we'll take our expression negative 4x cubed is over x to the fourth plus 1 over x to the fourth. And we'll simplify this before we take the derivative. So notice over here on the left, some of our x's are going to cancel out and we'll just have negative 4 over x and plus 1 over x to the fourth. Now that's kind of simplified, but what would be even better would be to rewrite our original function as negative 4x to the negative 1 power plus 1x to the negative 4 power. And the reason for that is there's a very simple rule for derivatives called the power rule, where we can easily work out what the derivative of this is and then bring it back to our original notation. So for the derivative of this, I'm going to take the power and multiply it out in the front on each of these terms, and then I'll just drop the power down by 1, just a simple derivative. So we have negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4, and we'll have x to the negative 2 power now. And we'll have negative 4 going out to the front, so we have minus 4x to the negative 5. And this derivative is equivalent to 4 over x squared minus 4 over x to the fifth. And that is going to be our answer. So it's much simpler to work through by simplifying things first when you can and then finding the derivative. Let's look now at level two. On this one, you want to notice right away that again, we have a single term in the denominator. So we can simplify this first and then take the derivative. I'm going to simplify this one a little bit quicker uh, because now you've seen an example uh, that really goes through in depth there in number one. So to simplify this, we're going to end up with our function um, where each term, like 4x cubed over x squared, is just going to become 4x because two of the x's on top will cancel with the two x's on bottom plus the middle term here would become 3 over x, and our final term would be minus 7 over x squared. Now the important step is to convert that into 4x plus 3x to the negative 1 using these negative exponents, minus 7x to the negative 2, and then our derivative the derivative of a linear term like this is just the slope of 4. So the derivative of that part is just 4. And then we would have minus 3x to the negative 2 and plus 14x to the negative 3. And this would all convert to our answer of 4 minus 3 over x squared plus 14 over x cubed. Let's look at level three. Now, on this type of example, notice that we do not any longer have just a single term in the bottom. So we can't split this apart and simplify it in the way that we did before. So in this one, we're going to use what's called the quotient rule. And we've proved the quotient rule before. Um, but Let's just do a, a kind of quick abbreviated version of how the quotient rule looked. It was, we want to do the bottom thing times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom 
all over top of the bottom squared. And that's going to be sort of a formula for how to get this derivative. So the derivative of our function is going to be the bottom thing in parentheses, x plus 2, times the derivative of the top. So the derivative of 4 is just 0, meaning this entire term, x plus 2 times 0, is going to end up uh, disappearing. So then we're going to have minus the top thing, the 4, times the derivative of the bottom thing, and the derivative of x plus 2 is just 1. So after all of that work, we really only end up with uh, minus 4 on the top. All right. On the bottom, we'll have x plus 2, in parentheses, squared. That's bottom squared. So our final answer is negative 4 over x plus 2 squared. And unless you're explicitly told to, I wouldn't bother uh, squaring x plus 2, you know. It would be, if you had to, it would be x squared plus 4x plus 4, but that's a pretty simple operation of just um, FOIL or multiplying a x plus 2 times x plus 2 and working out all of the distributions. So what we're focused on is getting the derivative, so I would just leave the answer like this. Let's jump to the next level. So again, we can't simplify this right away, so we're going to use our quotient rule. And you want to start to remember that you always start with the bottom thing on your quotient rule. Because of that minus sign in the quotient rule up there on the top, it's going to be very important what you put first and what you put second. We want the bottom thing times derivative of top, and we want the top thing times derivative of bottom. If you switch these around in the wrong way, you're going to end up with this minus applying to the wrong term, and your answer ends up um, all messed up. So we want to start with the bottom thing. So we're going to have, for our derivative, the bottom thing, x to the fourth plus 9, times the derivative of the top, which is just 0, minus the top, which is 5, times the derivative of the bottom thing, which is 4x cubed, plus a 0. So I won't bother writing in the plus 0. We have that all over the top of x to the fourth plus 9 squared, which I'm just going to leave the bottom squared part for my answer. So on the top, we can simplify this down just a little bit pretty quickly. The x to the fourth plus 9 times 0 is going to be gone, because anything times 0 is just 0. And we have negative 20 x cubed over our denominator x to the fourth plus 9 squared. So that ends up being our final answer for the derivative on this one. All right. Next example. We have a slightly more complicated denominator here, so let's look at what happens. We'll do bottom derivative of top minus top derivative of bottom 4x cubed minus 6x all over top of the bottom squared. And again, I'm not going to bother to square the bottom there, but this part goes away because of the time 0, and the rest is just multiplying or distributing a negative 6 in here. So we should get negative 6 times 4 is negative 24 x cubed plus 36 x over our denominator of x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4 squared. All right, on to level 6. So this time we'll have a little bit more algebra to do, but other than that, there's nothing really uh, more advanced about doing these quotient rules as we move up the ladder. We're still going to start with the bottom thing. So x to the fourth minus 8 is the bottom times derivative of the top, which would be negative 
x to the third plus zero, so we don't need to put in the plus zero, minus the top thing, negative 3x to the fourth plus two, times the derivative of the bottom, 4x cubed. Now, instead of writing all over top of the bottom thing squared over and over again, I'm just going to simplify this numerator first because I know that the bottom is just going to be this squared, and I'll put that in at the end. So if we distribute over here, we're going to have negative 12 x to the seventh plus 96 x cubed. And on the right side, notice we've got to distribute the minus and we've got to distribute the 4x cubed. So we're going to have to do this a little bit carefully here. We'll have positive 12x to the 7th and we'll have minus 8x cubed. All right, so when we put all these things together, again, this is just some, some algebra steps here. We have a negative 12x to the 7th and a positive 12x to the 7th. Those cancel each other out. And we're going to have 96 of these x cubed minus 8x cubed. So that ends up being a grand total of 88x cubed for our numerator. And we don't want to forget to put in the denominator of x to the 4th minus 8 squared. So that ends up being our overall result. All right, on to our top level. So level seven of figuring this out, we're going to go through and do our quotient rule one last time. We'll have the bottom thing, x to the fourth minus five x to the third minus four times the derivative of the top, which would be two x minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, four x cubed minus 15 x squared. And again, on this example, I'm not going to write in the denominator over and over again just to save room uh, because we have some distributing and some canceling to do before that. So when I distribute this through, I should get 2x to the fifth minus 10x to the fourth minus 8x. And over here, I'll have minus 4x to the fifth and plus... 15x to the fourth. So let's combine together our like terms here. I'll underline these for you real quick so you can make sure you see them along with me. I have 2x to the fifth minus 4x to the fifth, and I have minus 10x to the fourth and plus 15x to the fourth. So when we put our like terms together, we should end up with negative 2 x to the fifth as our total for those x to the fifths. And how many x to the fourths do we have? We have plus five as our total x to the fourths. We also still have a minus eight x, and we still have our denominator squared. So x to the fourth minus five x cubed minus four is all gonna be squared. So that's our derivative using the quotient rule. So remember, the quotient rule for derivatives, which you only want to use when you have to. If you can simplify things first and then just do the derivative as you normally would, then that's often better. But the quotient rule is you do the bottom thing times the derivative of the top minus the top times derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And that should work out for any quotient that you need to take the derivative of. 